and the, you know, the customer says, can you do this, the salespeople always say, yes, of course we can do it. But then they actually have to go back to the business, talk with the engineers or whoever and say, hey, can we do this? And a lot of times there is a lot of experimentation uh, that has to take place in order to figure out. And so you may be confident that you'll figure it out, you just don't know at the outset how you're gonna actually go about getting there. So don't confuse those. You know, every once in a while we'll talk with engineers within a business and they'll say, you know, because they don't wanna, they don't wanna look dumb in the eyes of the owner or their managers, they say, well, of course we know what we're doing all the time. You, you know, we, that's the wrong answer for the R&D tax credit. Because if you knew all the time what you were doing, then, you know, it doesn't qualify. So you want honest feedback from your people. And again, as long as that uncertainty exists, you meet the second test. So in order to resolve that uncertainty, you go to the third test, which is a process of experimentation. So here you start evaluating all your alternatives. You start doing your design work, your modeling, your testing. You're, you're evaluating of all those different options to see if you can reach a goal and what's the best way. Can you make a profit at it? You know, those are all types of things you have to figure out. And actually, sometimes you fail. And while failure obviously isn't the ultimate goal, sometimes it happens. So all those times, all those, you know, those 17 different iterations that you had to go through until the, you got it right on the 18th iteration, all that time spent in figuring something out is considered R&D time. Once you have figured it out and now you're ready to go to production, that's when the R&D stops. Okay, but every, until you know exactly what you're going to do, you're still doing R&D. You know, where uh, if you're getting, you know, if you have a customer and you keep getting uh, requests for the same part over and over and over again, if it's repeat, then of course, you know, you're not doing R&D. But if you've been doing, you're making parts for a customer and all of a sudden now they come to you with a little bit different design or they have a request for a different type of material, you have to figure that out. That's, there's going to be R&D there. The fourth test says that the activities need to rely on one of the hard sciences, which is usually, an, again, uh, one of the easier goals for most manufacturers. So, some, you know, like engineering, the biological sciences, technical sciences, chemical sciences, metallurgical sciences, food sciences, uh, the computer sciences, as opposed to the softer sciences, like, a, like sales and marketing, the social science, uh, human, any of the human behavioral type sciences. So this, again, this is a pretty easy goal for most manufacturers to meet. One in four tend to be the easier goals of the four-part test. It's proving that you had uncertainty, the second test, and then that you had to go through a process of experimentation in order to, uh, to overcome or, or, or come up with an answer. So that's a four-part test. So let me stop now and ask, does anybody have any questions about this definition of R&D or any of the qualifying costs. Okay. Yes. Um, kind of two questions. When you said 65% applies, that's just for the external labor? Yes, that's only for that third bucket, the contracted research or external labor costs. Everything else, wages, is 100%. But you may have noticed on there, it's not all the fringes. It's the W-2, you know, it's the, the wage portion. Yes, correct. So any any machinery that you you know because most times you'll capitalize your your equipment and machinery that does not it's not the cost of the machine. Now, if you have to if you purchase some machinery and you for whatever reason it didn't work right uh, and you scrap it, you get rid of it, um, then you could you could make a claim that that's R and D. Or if you have to spend time and cost modifying that machinery to do something different then you could have uh, some qualifying costs there, but it's, it's not, not the purchase price of the equipment. Okay. okay? Yes, sir? Is the training for the special machinery that included? Uh, probably, I probably would tend to not throw training in. That's more of that behavioral, you know, when you look at the, the, sci the, the fourth part of the test, it's more behavioral type stuff. And, 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 and in the end, quite honestly, it's probably, it's not gonna be a big component anyways. Yeah, 
Well, yeah, and and. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be repeat sales. It could be just one specific sale that causes the reaction to develop. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and whether it's for one client or many. I mean, there's many companies that have kind of a basic product. Like, you know, we work with a lot of packaging machine manufacturers, and they were every single one of their customers has a different shape of a bottle or something. And so even though they make machinery, each of those machines is customized. So it doesn't matter what the industry is, if you're if you're not making something that's, you know, an off the shelf product, if everything you do is different for your customers, you're always going to have stuff you, you have to figure out. And therefore there's going to be some level of R and D in just about everything you do. You know, as I was saying at the beginning, you know, the o, a lot of that we, we work with a lot of you know job shops, and job shops would be companies like uh, precision machining companies, metal fabricators, stampers, mold builders, plastic injection molders. These are people that are are making all the components going into the big John Deere equipment, and like I said before, medical equipment like a Medtronic. Doesn't matter who it is, Boeing. They all develop, you know, they, the, big, the OEMs develop and they sell and they brand and they market, but they go to all these job shops around the country for the components that go in. And a lot of times, those job shops, uh, until they, you know, if they've not heard of the R&D tax credit, they don't think they're doing R&D because they just say, well, we get a drawing from our customer and we make the part and, you know, and then therefore it's, it's the customer that has the R&D. Well, the customer will have some R&D, but the job shops still have to figure out if they can make that part. And they get hundreds, if not thousands, of requests each year, these job shops. That's, they get a ton of, uh, of RFPs for, for the different components and parts. And every one, should they choose to try to figure it out, they, they're, they're, they probably have some level of R&D going on with each of those quotes. Yeah, you could. Yes, you could go. Yes, you part the quote the quotation time is is part of that whole is part of the process. Again, you it's it's very common with biz, manufacturers that they'll have technical salespeople, and it can be you know it can be a uh, a sales engineer. It could be the owner who grew up in the business and you know doesn't have an engineering degree but is just technical because they've been in the business forever. And they often on the front end are working with clients, so salespeople, on defining the specs. You know, so, that's, so that's where the R&D starts, and, and that's where, you know, why you can claim, uh, in many cases, a portion of salespeople's time. And then again, you just have more and more people down the line touching R&D. Uh, but yeah, you, you will have, you, you will have uh, people in the, like I said, the, the prototype, the design, you know the CAD programmers, the tool makers, the quality people, the quotation. You can even quote the job. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So a lot of people. That's the key to the R&D tax credit: effective use of the credit, understanding the rules, and identifying everybody touching the process. Good questions. Any? Yes, sir. No, nope. it's just going to be ba basically the stuff we direct talked about, cost. direct costs, yeah, right, correct. And then another one, uh, what kind of documentation would generally be required? Yeah, and we're going to talk about documentation okay. if I can hold off, but thank you for okay. asking it. Any other questions? All right, if not, I'm going to have Brian come up right now, uh, Brian Dahl. Brian is owner of a couple businesses, a couple manufacturers, two, three, ten, I don't know, a couple, four. Yeah and has taken advantage of the R&D task credit. And sometimes it's better while Ryan and myself talking is, you know, it's, 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 it's good to get, get the information from the, uh, from the beneficiary directly. So Brian, if you just want to jump in. Thank you, Scott. Greetings. I'm a, a son of a, of a manufacturer's uh, step, or a son-in-law of a manufacturer we uh, principally manufacture farm equipment, and our market is really the world. And we're a startup company, um, current company, we started in 1996, but it's really a successor company that we started in 1977. I've worked with my brother since 